Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. In our series on the uh, AUA 2020 meeting, uh, we're going to be speaking this morning with Dr. Kian Salari, a urologic oncologist at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. And he's also an instructor in surgery at Harvard Medical School. And he's joining us to talk about his abstract presentation from the American Urological Association 2020 annual meeting titled Five Alpha Reductase Inhibitors and Risk of Overall and Fatal Bladder Cancer. Welcome to the program, Dr. Salari. Thank you very much for having me, Neil. Urologic oncologist at Mass General. Um, give us a brief background and talk about your role there at Mass General. Uh, sure. So, as you said, I'm a urologic oncologist uh, in the Department of Urology at Massachusetts General Hospital and at the MGH Cancer Center. Um, so that that means that I see patients and perform cancer surgeries on patients with bladder cancer, like the like the patients that are in the study we're going to discuss as well as patients with other urologic malignancies like prostate cancer, testicular cancer, um, and kidney cancer. When it comes to bladder cancer, um, is there just one type or are there several different types of cancer that affect the bladder specifically? The most common type of bladder cancer is uh, what we call a transitional cell carcinoma, which is just a cancer that arises from the inner lining of the bladder. Mm -hmm. Um, And for clinical purposes, we often categorize those types of cancers into two main buckets. One is called non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, which is the type primarily we're discussing today. And the other is termed muscle invasive bladder cancer, which uh, they have those names due to the depth of invasion into the bladder wall that they exhibit um, at the time of diagnosis. And that drastically changes the way that we manage them and uh, and treat those patients surgically. AUA 2020, um, talk about your uh, involvement. Is this the first time that you've been involved in um, AUA, the uh, annual meeting? Uh, no, I've been uh, participating in the AUA national meeting probably about eight years now. Okay. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's the largest gathering of uh, urologists um, worldwide, actually. It's, so it's essentially the, the national meeting of all uh, United States-based uh, urologist, but also draws quite a large international uh, participation as well. Now, you presented an abstract at this year's meeting. Uh, what was the title of that abstract? I, I mentioned it in the opening, but would you tell us the title of that abstract again? Uh, the title of the abstract is 5-alpha reductase inhibitors and risk of uh, overall and fatal bladder cancer. Now, what what is 5-alpha reductase inhibitors? What are What are those? Yeah, so 5-alpha reductase inhibitor is a class of medications that's very familiar to urologists because it's a uh, type of medication that's commonly prescribed uh, for reducing the size of the prostate. As you may know, uh, men, um, as they get older, their prostates get larger in size, and that is uh, the cause of what some of the urinary symptoms that some men experience as they get older um, is from. And so this class of medications... The way it works is by blocking part of the uh, androgen signaling, androgens meaning like testosterone, the male hormone, um, and it blocks the conversion of one form of testosterone to a more potent form of testosterone called dihydrotestosterone. Mm -hmm. Um, And by doing so, it starves the prostate of uh, its its fuel, essentially, um, thereby shrinking it in size. And so it's commonly used for that purpose to uh, shrink the size of the prostate. There's also a lower dose form of, the, of these medications that are actually used for male pattern hair loss mm-hmm. as well, but urologists primarily use this drug as a way to reduce the size of the prostate. Well, I, I think yeah. there, are, there are other drugs that don't actually reduce the size of the prostate, but, re, but um, do something to the, to the muscles surrounding it. Um, those types of drugs do not cause this type of risk that we're gonna talk about, is that right? Correct. There's another class of drugs uh, called uh, alpha-1 adrenergic antagonists, and those are drugs like tamsulosin or Flomax, which relax the muscle surrounding the, the prostate, um, the, the urethra that, as it travels through the prostate. And that, those, that relaxation of the muscle helps uh, the urine pass better. So that's, that's another class of medications used also for an enlarged prostate. What is this risk involved with people that have uh, bladder cancer when they take these 5-alpha reductase inhibitors? So actually, the angle that we were looking at this uh, was inspired by a, a few studies that have been published over the last couple of years um, that were working off of, the, off of the question of trying to understand why men 
seem to have a higher risk of bladder cancer than women. Um, if you look at the population of bladder cancer patients, somewhere around three to four times as many men as women are diagnosed with the disease every year. Some of that we know is due to environmental um, or occupational exposures, so uh, cigarette smoking and some um, toxins that are found in paint dyes and um, other types of industrial kind of environments um, are risk factors for bladder cancer. And historically, you know, those, er those industries have been uh, primarily male workers. And so, um, but even after you account for some of those environmental and occupational hazards, there are far more men that get diagnosed with bladder cancer than women every year. And so one angle that people have been looking at this is to hypothesize whether the male hormone um, testosterone or the, or the androgen receptor, which is the, the receptor that the testosterone molecule works on, might have something to do with the risk of bladder cancer. And there was a few studies that looked in retrospective studies uh, examining whether or not men who are on this medication, which lowers your effective uh, testosterone signaling or androgen signaling, um, might have actually a lower risk of bladder cancer. And, um, and they actually found that it, it appeared that men who were on a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor had lower risks of bladder cancer recurrence or, um, or mortality from bladder cancer. But uh, as, as you may know, when you look at retrospective studies, there can often be a, quite a bit of confounding uh, built into that that are hard, is hard to control for. So what we set out to do was to use a very large prospective cohort of men that are that have been followed since the 1980s uh, at the Harvard School of Public Health, uh, called the Health Professionals Follow-Up Study, um, which included cl close to 40,000 men, and looked at those men who um, had been on a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor uh, for quite a number of years compared to those who were not, and essentially looked to see whether there was any difference in the rates of developing bladder cancer or among those who did develop it, dying of bladder cancer. And we actually found that there, that there was no significant difference um, in, in the di rate of diagnosis or the rate of death due to bladder cancer among men taking a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor compared to those who were not. Well, what research uh, trends do you see coming as a result of this study? Current or progression for bladder cancer, as I mentioned at, at the start, uh, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer is treated very differently than muscle invasive bladder cancer, and and the former can progress into the latter, and and that's what we really try to avoid, because once bladder cancer becomes muscle invasive, it becomes much more lethal and requires much uh, more extensive uh, surgery and intense treatment, including potentially chemotherapy, radiation therapy sometimes, um, and it can be quite morbid. Uh, patients have to have their entire bladder removed surgically and, and reconstructed. And so uh, there's a great interest in, in, in when we do diagnose patients with non-muscle invasive bladder cancer to be able to uh, give them some kind of additional treatment, um, whether that could have been something like a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor or other medications, either systemically or, through, or, or sometimes even locally within the bladder to try to reduce the risk of uh, recurrence or progression. So that's one area that um, there's an intense research interest in now. And the other area is uh, are kind of emerging molecular and genetic biomarkers for predicting the prognosis of these patients and or their response to these different types of medications to not only try to improve outcomes, but also reduce the burden of surveillance for bladder cancer patients. Out of all cancers, bladder cancer actually has the highest cost per capita from the time of diagnosis to the time of death. And, and that's because uh, we, we have to do a lot of intense surveillance uh, because bladder tumors tend to, even when we remove them, to recur and come back. And so we spend a lot of effort um, you know, uh, surveilling the bladder, meaning uh, doing cystoscopy where we put a camera into the bladder periodically every three to six months often uh, to check to make sure the patient hasn't developed a recurrence. If we were able to have some kind of let's say, blood-based test or a urine-based diagnostic test that could easily tell whether or not a recurrence occurred, it would greatly reduce the, uh, the, the burden both for the patients and for the healthcare system for doing a lot of the surveillance work. And so that's another area of, in, of intense interest that's uh, is kind of coming down the pike in our field. Well, give us a website where we can learn more. Uh, the main meeting website, I believe, is aua2020.org. And on there is a link to all the abstracts that were presented at the study, at, at the uh, meeting. Um, and so that'd probably be the best place to look for more information.
Great, great. Dr. Solari, I appreciate you coming on and speaking with us this morning. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Dr. Kian Solari. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.